This video is specifically for those who want to learn a little bit more about the advanced features within HubSpot Forms. If you're looking for the basics, then I would recommend watching this video right here, which is another video I did specifically on the basics for Forms. But let's dive right in to the more advanced features for HubSpot Forms. My name is Jasper. I'm a certified HubSpot consultant and let's get right into it. So first of all, there's one thing I want to mention and that's when you go to create form, the experience today will show you two different ways to build a form. So we have the regular form editor, which is the new one, but that one specifically is still lacking some of the features that the legacy form editor still does have. So for the first part of the video, we're gonna look at the legacy form editor. So I can show you some of the advanced features there. And then after that, we'll go to the new form editor so that I can also teach you which advanced features we have within the new editor. So let's go to the legacy form editor here. We'll just start with a blank template and let's first get a couple of fields in here. One thing that I always like to do is I first like to have the email field as the first one and then I start with the rest. So let's say we want the first name, we want the last name. This is all things that we have covered in the basic video, how you can like drag and drop these things. Let's say we wanna ask about the budgets, the preferred locations, and then property interests. All right, so let's do this for now. So first of all, for each of these properties, something we also covered in the basic part is that we can make these fields required or hidden. The label is just the name that you will give it here. This is separate from the property name within HubSpot. So sometimes you might have a property name a certain way in HubSpot, but instead you want it's framed as a question here. So for example, we do have a property named budget, but a more user-friendly way to name this property within a form could be, um, what is your budget? Then the placeholder text uh, makes actually more sense for um, these fields. And this is something that you can use to just have it pre-filled with something. So you could do something like Joe, and then for the last name, we can add a placeholder and say Joe Harper, for example. And here we can do a placeholder as well. And this just means that there's like some text there until people actually enter something. It's still considered being an empty field if they don't enter anything. So it's just like a placeholder text that's there. Now let's say if we look at property interests, you can also add logic to these properties. The first thing here we can do is we can add progressive fields. So for example, we could say, and for that I'll go back to budget, we could say that if this field is already known in our system, we want to replace it with a cute progressive field. Then for the progressive fields, we'll go down here again and see what additional information we might want to ask. So let's say that if they already filled that out, instead we would like to ask when they are looking to complete their purchase. So what will happen now is that if this is already known in the system, HubSpot will intelligently swap out this field for this one instead. Or if you do not queue any progressive fields, it will actually remove that field so your form is a little bit shorter, making it easier for people to fill it out, which usually increases your conversion rate. Now, another thing we can do is when we go to property interest here, and we then go look at the logic here. Another thing we can do is we can show different form fields based on what people choose here. So let's say if they choose a house or a townhouse, a multifamily condo, apartments. So if they choose any of these options, then we actually want to show an option preferred number of bedrooms. And we're doing the same for bathrooms as well. So now whenever someone selects either a house, townhouse, multifamily condo, or an apartment here, they will get the other options to select their preferred number of bedrooms and their preferred number of bathrooms, because uh, obviously when you're buying a plot of land, it doesn't really make sense to ask for those things. So that's another thing that we can do here. Now, before I go to the next one, please like this video, subscribe to the channel for more HubSpot excellence, because it really helps out the channel. Thank you. So now we have all of these things. Um, one thing I always like to do is also update the label. Usually, I see most people leave it to submit. I would like to do something like get the conversation started. So 
a little bit more engaging, a little less uh, templated, which is always fun. One last thing that I want to show here is the hidden fields. So what we can do is, for example, if this is shown on a web page where we already know the country. So let's say here we can see preferred locations of Spain and we just want to pre-fill the country as being Spain. Then we can just enter the value here already. So we make it a hidden field and then in default value, we can say Spain. So now the user doesn't get to see this property when they're filling out the form, but when they submit the form, this will be submitted to their record as well. So we already have that property right there. Next, let me show you what other options we have. So after somebody submits the form, by default, they will see a thank you page that just says, thanks for submitting the form. You do have the option to add a layout here. You can add some images as well, make it a little bit more fun. But you can also say, I want to redirect this person to a URL, or I want to redirect them to a specific HubSpot page. The next thing you can do is you can send them to a scheduling page, so for example, a meeting page with me. But even more interesting, and this is when you have Sales Hub Enterprise, as you can add some conditional logic to redirect them to a scheduling page or another page. So for example, you can say here that if the budget is any of, um, let's say that it's more than a million, then I do want to redirect them to a scheduling page. If the budget is less than 300,000, let's say, then I want to send them to a external URL, which could be some kind of landing page. So. And then when um, a visitor doesn't mean, meet any of these conditions, we can do something else. Then the next thing, you can choose the life cycle stage that a contact enters based on the form submission. So whenever somebody submits this form, by default, it's gonna be a lead. Let's say we know that they're already a little bit further on and I won't make them a marketing qualified lead for this form specifically. We can choose that right here. Then we can also choose to send submission email notifications to the contact's owner, or we can send submission notifications to a specific user. Next, we can choose the language for the form and the error messages that are shown on the form. And then last but not least, we can also choose to add this form to a specific campaign so that anyone who submits this form will become part of that specific HubSpot campaign so that you can track your return on investment for that specific campaign. Here you can also see we have pre-populate contact fields with known values activated, but since we do have the progressive fields as well, any progressive fields will just be hidden. Any other fields that are not progressive and have already have a value, they will be pre-filled. Then when we go to style, you can see we can change the style of our form. So HubSpot already has a couple of different styles that we can choose from. So we have a linear style here, for example. We have a round style and we have a sharp style. So this is what sharp would look like. This is if we choose round and this is like linear. So you can choose what you like here, but you also have the option to go into more detail and really change all of the different colors that are used in the form and the different sizes. Then another option that I still want to show you is if we go back to the form for a moment and then we go to other form elements here you also have the option to add a captcha so spam prevention although i don't really have spam issues with hubspot forms even without using captcha and then also data privacy options which is an important one if you have contacts unsubscribing from your emails and they're submitting a form again and you want to resubscribe them because of that form you really need to add one of the data privacy options to make that happen so for example you can add legitimate interest to it, which will add a description here that we need your content, content information to provide you with information about our product and services. And you can change this text if you want. And then here you can choose the type of email subscription that somebody will be subscribed to if they submit that form. For example, if it's about marketing information, you can add that subscription there. And then when they submit the form, they will be resubscribed to both of these subscription types. And then you also have to choose the legal basis here. So either it's legitimate interest lead, customer or other. Now let's go have a look at the new form experience. Also, 
you will note that I haven't looked at the automation tab here and that's because these automations are the more simple automations. So these would be really helpful when you're using HubSpot's Marketing Hub Starter, which I have a separate video about, which you will find right here. But um, for this more advanced video, these are not gonna be relevant for us. You really want to look at like the Starter Hub video for these and my other video about more advanced workflows if you want to build more advanced workflows. I'll link the one right up here as well. So let's go back. We'll create another form and this time we go for the new form editor. We'll choose a blank template. So first let's add some additional properties here. So here you can also add logic, which is one of the things we can do here. For example, one of the things that we can do here is the progressive fields. Well, we can't do that yet. I'm expecting that HubSpot will add that at some point, but it's not there yet. So here we can say that when the budget is any of over a million, then I want to show... So here we have a couple of options. So either we show certain fields based on that, we hide certain fields based on that, or we redirect them to a specific page on form submit based on this option that they choose here. So for example, let's say we want to redirect them to a meeting link if they have a budget over 1 million, and then we save and activate. So that rule is now set and this makes that when I submit the form, they will be redirected to my meeting link. So another thing that you can do is since we have a multi-step form in this case, we also can add a progress bar. So we will show the percentage completion or we can also add the number of steps so they can see step one of one or no text at all. So let's just keep it at percentage completion and then we can add a second page here. Let's find a property for this one. Move this, so number of bathrooms. Now we also want the number of bedrooms. Actually, these can perfectly go next to each other. And then let's say we want to add, when are you looking to complete the purchase here as well? Now, one cool thing that we can also do here is we can take multiple of these properties and based on that, we want to show them my meeting link, for example. So let's go to logic here again. We already have this rule number one here, and then we're just going to add a filter to this group. And here we can see we can choose and or or. So if we choose and, both of these have to be true for this to happen. So here we'll say, when are you looking to complete your purchase? Is any of less than three months and within three to six months? Both of those are true. Then I want to send them to my meeting link. So now we'll activate that and we're all set for this. So now based on form submission, they will get a thank you or they will be redirected to my meeting link. Next, let's have a look at the styling here as well. This looks quite similar to what I've shown just before in the legacy editor with a couple of extra options. So you can see that the structure changed a little bit, but you do have all of the different details here that you can change. But for example, the progress bar is something that doesn't exist in legacy forms. You do have the option to style that here as well. So this is all really simple to use to make the form look exactly how you want it to look for your website. Now, last but not least, I also want to show you some options here. So let's go over these options. So in general, we still have the pre-populate fields from returning visitors. We also have that on our legacy forms. A new one that you will see here is the form shortening. So this is where HubSpot will use AI to determine which forms that it can automatically enrich so that it can just leave off those properties from the form, increasing the conversion rate on your form. So this is an interesting one to use. Marketing campaigns still the same. And then also the lifecycle stage is the same as for legacy forms. For the submission settings also, the exact same thing as what we saw with legacy forms and then language and region is also the same but we do have the option here that AI translations for all form content are enabled, which is something that's not available on legacy forms. Now, when you have created these forms in HubSpot and you're getting all of these new contacts coming in, obviously you want to do something with these contacts. And that is where my next video comes in on how to create lists within HubSpot. I'll link it right up here. I think you will love that video. I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.